all of them got back, they washed up. Some of their clothes were splattered with blood. It wasn't that bad, though. A quick wash would clear up the evidence. They sat around in the sofa on the floor. So what is your ability? Mary Kay asked Sal. Sal hesitated for a moment, weighing the pros and cons before speaking. My ability is what I like to call sound manipulation. I'll keep it brief. Sal paused in his words to rearrange his thoughts. Sound is made of vibration. I can co control those. I can make them disappear, transfer them somewhere else, or even enhance them. The gears in America's brain started shifting. May I ask for a more specific explanation? Energy cannot be created nor erased, but only transferred. Roger also thought the same thing, but he didn't find it necessary to ask. When I enhance the vibrations, I confer other energies around me. It doesn't only have the, to be energy created from the sound itself. Meanwhile, the erased ones, I don't actually erase them. I just decrease the volume to the point where it isn't comprehensible by normal hearing. Oh, so that's why sometimes I can hear you too. I can see you two, your, your two's mouse moving, but no sound comes out. America lifted his head as if he reached a plausible explanation. It's quite pleased with this explanation. It was within the range of his knowledge. He didn't like explanations that didn't make sense. America chuckled as his eyes shined with anticipation. Can you create soundproof areas? I can, but I have a limit of how big the area is and how long. Sal replied, America felt like this was absolutely perfect. He had been quite worried about discussing revolution related things due to the fear of being eavesdropped on. About discussing the revolution related, well wait, freaking thing went up, back up here. This solves all his problems. The Russian and the American had similar worries. Russia just was unwilling to voice them out. He tends to keep to himself about his inner thoughts. The blindfold is used to enhance my hearing. My ability does not take quite a bit, does take a quite a bit of concentration. I have to process all the vibrations at once at a high speed. Soft with the blindfold back, black blindfold that had been wrapped around his pale white neck. Can I have a demonstration? Uh, South lifted three fingers and pointed out uh, America's chest. Suddenly, a wave of force pushed his upper body backwards. Sad collided with the wall. The force wasn't large enough to injure someone or damage the wall, though. After snapping out of his date, Prince lifted himself back to his original sitting position while rubbing the back of his head. That's really cool. Thanks. That's all for my ability. Let's go to bed for school tomorrow, shall we? America nodded completely turned to his bunk with Russia. Both America and Russia had the same thing on their minds. They gave each other a glance and manual understanding. South didn't tell them his ability's weakness. The prince and guard duel noticed this. Both were observant and their understanding of each other was surprisingly good. Every ability has a weakness no matter how powerful it is. Dash. That's the more general rule of every ability. The more powerful an ability, the larger the drawback. It seemed like the Korean man wanted to avoid talking about his weakness, which makes sense. His worries were reasonable. They had just partnered up, and so he didn't trust them yet. America gave Russia a, uh, it's a fine, we'll find out eventually anyways, glance to which Russia nodded in acknowledgement. They just kind of like look at each other. <laughs> the, the nods and those, those nodding memes. <laughs> the next morning, sunlight peeked through the blinds, and South decided it was a good day to scare them awake again. He fired up his ability, enhancing sound vibrations till it was loud enough as an as an emergency alarm. He was also made sure to the soundproof the room so that the people living in the other dorms don't complain about the noise. Russia jolted awake and slammed his head on top of the on the onto the top bunk again. Get up, you two! South Korea continued to amp up the volume. Geez, would you stop? We're awake. Stop the alarm already. Russia rubbed at his aching head. The Korean man shrugged and shut it off. American peeked his head to see Russia grumbling and complaint. Maybe shrink a few inches and, and that'll solve your problem. Fuck off. The four of them went to the class and they were pleasantly surprised no one had discovered the body yet. 
Then again, the school was fairly big. Nor checked on the hallway earlier in the morning. He said that the smell was pungent and the scent was just the same as before. Seemingly satisfied, he hurried back to the class before the bell rang. The Korean dragon sat next to his brother. As per usual, except this time, behind them were two additions. America was chatting with South when North came in, which made him furrow his brows. Don't act familiar now, he sat between them. We're not working to, we're working together now, aren't we? America smiled as he spoke. South chimed in. Don't mind my brother. He's a bit overprotective sometimes. The prince leaned back and watched Russia as he reviewed his notes from yesterday. You're such a moderate student. Too bad most of it isn't important info. At least I'm getting better than you who lazies around all day. Are you really challenging the once in a million year genius? The prince said arrogantly with a shading and grin flash on his face. Why not? I'll get better marks than you and I'll work hard for it. The Russian god in America today with an equally shitty grin. America sneered. At least I'm not a wanted criminal. Russia scoffed. At least I'm not a tool. The teacher came in right at that moment. Quite convenient. Quite convenient timing. Sometimes I can't speak. <laughs> Russia got the last word. Yeah. We probably felt good about that. America backed off and smiled, still with a smile still on his face. Touche. Class, I'd like to announce that the school tournament is back. I encourage everyone to participate. Let's go over the rules. This piped America's interest, making him raise an eyebrow. You need to be in a group of five people, no more, no less. You have to find another member. Anyone who backs out after signing up will get points deducted from their overall semester score. The teacher paused to flip through their notes. There will be three round. There will be three rounds. Preliminary. I don't know what the fuck that is. Preliminaries. I thought so, but I was like, that doesn't. I don't know what that word is. Preliminaries, semifinals, and finals. I won't go into detail on what it'll be. The tournament will be held in a month or so. You will have plenty of time to prepare. If you China. If you want to sign up, consult me and I'll handle it. Their fifth member? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not gonna say Oh you don't know because you haven't read it yet. Oh. oh I have read it. I'm I just haven't read it yet for my story. I'm I'm like ten chapters behind though. Cheating being is prohibited. The terminate will be supervised by the headmaster and vice headmaster themselves, so don't even try. It's prohibited. As for the prizes, there will the teacher was cut off by a distant ear piercing scream of horror from a student. The four of them flashed and glanced at each other. I think the body was found. <laughs> Obviously. Actually, uh, EU is the vice headmaster. Everyone in the classroom rushed out to check out what was going on. Outside, there were other classes that rushed out as well. They saw a condensed crowd in the distance at a familiar deserted hallway. Oh no, I wondered what that could have what could have possibly happened? America said sarcastically in the end. <laughs> I can't wonder what could possibly have happened. <laughs> the four of them pushed through the murmuring crowd as to see their familiar victim with his head detached from his body. The air smelled so strongly of blood that some people had to run to the bathroom. Who would have done such a thing? Do we have traitors in our school? His family is a part of the government. Are they trying to challenge the kingdom to war? How horrific. Yes, yes they are. <laughs> Does that, oh my gosh, I said this, I said this, I smoke weed. <laughs> I don't think that's legal. Whispers along those lines filled their ears. A person next to America spoke not too loudly. The sword must have been planted. There's no way the culprit would have left the murder, we murder weapon at the scene. Are you stupid? Of course it's not planted. Clearly that's the murder weapon. The cut is too clean to be anything other than a sword. Do you not 
Do you need to sit down for a second? Maybe the blood stench is getting to you. America said with a concern in his voice, whether the concern was real or not is unknown. The students second-guessed themselves, saying that it was America who was known for his talent. The student didn't see any reason to doubt him. Yeah, I think I do need to sit down. Once the student left, Russia leaned into America and whispered, We're sorting to gaslighting now. Huh? I never said I was a good guy. I've done more heinous crimes in my lifetime anyways. The teacher stepped up trying to get students to go back to their classes and convince them everything was under control. It wasn't very believable with the amount of panic in their voices. America stepped out of his position to stand next to the body where everyone could see him. Go back to your classes. I'll make sure any crime made in this school will so don't go unpunished. It is my duty after all. He spoke intellectually and slow enough for everyone to understand. America paused. If you have any reports to make, consult me and I'll make good use of it. There is nothing to be fearful about. Now go back to your classes. The crowd felt the prince's cold and unyielding gaze. America walked back to his original position, an offhanded remark from the guard. Pretentious bastard. <laughs> South and North had been acting all innocent and uncaring from afar, not even sparing a glance to the prince. Suddenly a person shouted in the back and retort, If anyone here is guilty, it's you. You royals are all hypocrites. A tiny object came flying past America and scraped his cheek. A small cut appeared on the side of his face. The prince halted and turned his back. As a figure emerged from the crowd, the sound of the wood clattering against the hard ground. This fucking ad resonated within the hallway as they walked. It'll play next after the fucking chapter. The figure had pale white skin except the center of their face, was, which was red. They wore a black and white kimono with gold stripes along the edges. The emerald green eyes held contempt and disdain pair with a, with a frown. The wooden clattering sound would come from the wooden sandals they were wearing. You better not have forgotten all your atrocious crimes you've committed. Pay for your sins. The figure held out their hand, hovering pink petals formed around him. The petals came flying towards the prince at high speed. The crowd was scared and immediately fled so they didn't get caught up in the crossfire. But a small amount of people still watched from afar away behind some pillows. The petals rained down on America. He just stood there as the petals cut through his skin. It seems my normal defenses can't handle these petals. That's amp enough. America thought internally. After a few seconds, it seemed America had already increased his defense because the petals started, started deflecting off. Russia was just about to interfere when America raised his hand to stop him. Russian glared in annoyance. Do you know how many of my limbs would be cut off if I let a single drop of your blood scale? Don't worry, I won't let them get to you. Russia couldn't find anything to retort with, so he backed off and watched silently as he, his eyes softened at the prince's words. Less talking, more fighting. The figure continued with another barrage of, pet, barrage of petals. What's your name? America asked calmly as he let out, let the petals collide against his skin. I'll, what do you have with mother? I'll be it. I'll be it. I didn't know that was one word. <laughs> Albeit his defense were high, it was starting to chip away and it was using a lot of energy. My name is Japan, don't forget it. Japan lunged forward with a round, with a roundhouse kicking, it's roundhouse. <laughs> is it. Japan a girl or a boy? Japan's a boy. The princess said before the kick landed. He coated his leg in the petals. America until they praised this. If he didn't do that, then his leg and bone might have snapped. The prince lifted an arm to block as the petals around Japan rotated at a high speed like a shredder. Russia could see the sparks flying through the air. The dragon also noticed that America didn't attack. He just stood there as Japan hit him over and over again. Eventually, it seemed Japan would have almost drained his energy. Flowers bloomed around his body. They, they were beautiful, but they spread, but they seeped blood. This must be his ability's weakness, Russia thought to himself. Your ability weakness is starting to show. How about we call it a draw? America dusted off his shoulder. 
Shut up and fight me. Why won't you attack? Don't take me too lightly. Japan clenched the flowers that had bloomed in his, on his eye. Blood dripped down his chin and he summoned more petals. This picture of Japan. Japan is a dragon? Japan is not a dragon. Oh, I'm surprised. <laughs> she is surprised that Japan is not a dragon. I mean, well, this. The other Asian countries are dragons. What do you have against me? America asked nonchalantly. He chalantly, ha! Huh? Why did I always use that word? I don't like it. He walked towards Japan Just as the petals deflected. Like no big deal. As the petals deflected off him. How dare you not remember when you killed my mother in Pearl Harbor? Fucking Japanese Empire. Did he say you're the one that attacked Pearl Harbor? <laughs> America here? paused in, in thought for a moment. He scanned his memory. Ah, oh, that incident. What do you expect? She rose in revolt against, against Asia. A mere child murderer, my mother. You were in the same age as me back then. How could I ever forget that? And I will never forgive, despise, and I will forever despise you for it. And that is the end of the chapter. Would you like to speak about it? We can discuss. Like, Let's try to. <laughs> Mask. So, Japan is very vocal. Japan is very vocal. This is what she has to say. <laughs> Does anyone else suspect America? No. Japan is just pissed that it killed his mom. <laughs> and how right he is. Very nice art though. This. So he grows flowers and the petals are his weapons? Yeah, right? his, the petals are like, his ability. Oops. The Chinese stars. They're like, uh, what the fuck are they called? I don't know, but they're the petals that come off the pink trees that supposedly, if you, uh, that's a very loud, well, very loud vehicle. Supposedly, the petals, like, of the tree that if you, cherry blossom trees, if you just, like, there's a myth in Japan, if you uh, confess your love to somebody underneath a cherry blossom tree, they'll. Love you forever. Mm -hmm. Um, but those are cherry blossom petals. I just want you to start the next chapter. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> in the episode. <laughs>